All right, everyone. Yay, we're doing finger exercises today. <laughs> Fun, huh? Um, a lot of people, it surprised me, a lot of people were wanting uh, something like this, finger exercises. Um, you know, and, and people tend, when they, they hear scales and arpeggios and broken chords and finger exercises, we tend to think, oh, boring. You know, nobody wants to do that. Uh, we just want to play our favorite music and, and enjoy it. Um, but anything, you know, that scales and arpeggios, exercises, anything that's an exercise uh, physically for your fingers, um, if you do it in the right way and the right amount uh, and frequency, it can really help you're playing. You might find some physical difficulty whenever you're playing your favorite music. Some things that you just can't do. You can't make your fingers do it. You don't know how to make your fingers do it. You don't know what to do to make that easier. You think, well, if I just keep playing, I'll get better. And while that's true, uh, these exercises right here are something I did when I was a kid. Uh, there are a set of 20 exercises in book one. And that's what I'm going to show you. And all 20 exercises are on webpianoteacher.com now for members. I'm going to show you the first one for free here. Uh, and show not only um, do I show you the exercises, but I show you how to do them and how to practice them, which is not something you get a lot when you just buy a book of you know finger exercises. Um, <clears throat> but the thing about them, you know, we don't want to waste away our lives playing finger exercises. We want to play the music we love, the music we enjoy. And these exercises, all they do is help us to better do that. They take out some of the physical difficulty and, and hurdles that we might have, and uh, we're able to easier, uh, you know, make, makes it easier for us to play the music we love. Um, <clears throat> you know, and, and we tend to think of exercises as strengthening your fingers, or it makes them stronger, more limber. Well, it does more than that. Uh, it actually, you know, having to play them a lot gets your you know, there's lessons that you learn physically, uh, that's, a, that's the best way I can say it, uh, that stick with you after you, after you do them enough. And, uh, like, you know, I cannot play, if I didn't play for a couple of months, I could always come back and get my technique back, uh, you know, right away within a day or two. Um, because I've done these exercises when I was a kid and they've stuck with me, um, the, uh, the lessons that you learn from them and how to play and how, where to put the weight of your hand and uh, positioning of your hand and so forth. A lot of times, you know, playing the exercises, just the redundancy of them, you know, your, your body kind of figures it out the best way to do it. Our bodies are really good at that, at, uh, without even thinking about it. If we do a task over and over, it figures out the most efficient way to do something. And I, I found that these set of 20 exercises have really done that for me. Because I don't really play them anymore. I played them a lot when I was a kid. And, <clears throat> you know, it stuck with me. But let's, let's start here. This is... Uh, exercise one, it's the easiest one, but it, it's uh, very effective. This is what it sounds like. Okay, you know, nothing, nothing to listen to, but uh, it really will help you physically on the piano. It's kind of like a, you know, a pro football player. If you you know, the, the, the stuff that you do off the field, the weightlifting, the, the running, or whatever uh, exercises that a football player would do, um, then when they get on the field, it helps them to do that. This is kind of what this is. It's just making you a better pianist all around, having a better technique so that you're able to handle um, the things in your playing. So, uh, when, when I do these on the website, I'm not only going to show you the exercise, but I'm going to show you uh, how to play it, how fast to play it, and what kind of techniques to use when you're playing them to get the most out of the exercises. And you don't have to play them, you know, like an hour a day or anything. I think the, the book even uh, that I got these out of says, you know, play them an hour a day, but I never did that. I never played them an hour a day. I played them for a few minutes every day, and they did me worlds of good. So uh, that's why I'm showing you these, because there's the one I use, so I know that they work. But this first one, uh, we just start, we're going to do octaves here. We're not going to have any, uh, any, any black keys here on this, on this exercise. And uh, we're going to start on C with our thumb on our right hand. Here's middle C, so I'm down here. My left hand pinky is going to be right here. Alright? And <clears throat> we're just going to skip the, the D, alright? So we're going to go C to E. But we don't skip a finger. That's what I always tell my students on this, that for, to uh, understand, make sure you don't skip a finger, just skip a key. And we're going up to our two fingers. See how I'm, I'm doing that? 
<coughs> finger one, finger two. All right, and then F, G, A, G, F, E. Now, that makes me end up on D when I get back down to my thumb, because I made that skip there. Let's do that again. Skip. Now I'm on a different note. I'm on D. And then you do the skip again. You always do the skip on the way up. All right, then I have E there, and then ellipsis for, we can to uh, continue doing the same thing. And then we're going to learn how to come down in a minute. But now, a lot of people, their fingers will start flying around, and, you know, moving all around everywhere to, to make it work. That's what you want to try to uh, combat. The <clears throat> more you can stay still, the more you can stay in one place, the better. Keep your fingers nice and tight, keep them curved, of course. See how my fingers kind of all, are all staying in contact with the keys? And I'm just using a little, little movement. I'm staying really close and my fingers are really uh, trying, you know, staying in the same place until I have to move them. And that's the idea with the technique. Because it's, you know, if you do have a smaller movement, it's uh, more efficient. And, you know, when you're going fast, every little bit counts. This exercise, just do it with your right hand alone, and you keep going up. You know, if I kept going up, so I'm staying nice and tight. I'm not doing this, and I'm not bouncing on every note. That's very bad to do that. You don't want to do that. Stay nice and tight. All right, now when I get up to G. Right here when I get on B and I, I do the skip to D, and I get on the note G here, this G note, then we're going to go the other way, we're going to come back down, alright? And again, I'm just showing you right hand here to start with, so G, and we're going to skip here, coming down, and I'm not going to skip a finger, I'm going to use that fourth finger, five, four, like that, see that? Okay, and that's, uh, i actually show you that right here, I should have, should have pointed this out, but G, see all of this is just, I'm showing you how to go up, and then once you get to this G note, we're going to come down and do that skip there, C, B, C, B, E, now we're on F now, now we do the skip coming down to D, and then the skip, see that, how I get lower and lower, hate using a metronome or something or uh, you can use a drum beat if you have a keyboard you can you know use a drum machine or something uh, but I like to make the ticks be if I'm going slow especially a tick for each um, <coughs> each note so if you start out slowly and I recommend doing that you know put it on like 84 or 86 or something tick 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 I have no idea how fast that is but concentrating on keeping your hands small, okay? Small. Especially those of you who have really big hands, you have to work twice as hard. <laughs> Excuse me. I've had a cold. You have to work twice as hard if you have a big hand staying small. But that's the key. So that when you... put a little movement in there later. I'll show you that in a second, where we're going to have a little... Where I, my wrist is kind of going this way. Now, I remember I told you to try not to move at all. And that's, that's the first thing you want to do. And then, after we've done that, we've got you where you have all those little extra movements out of there. Then we're going to have a little... See, I'll go kind of the left. And my wrist will move a little bit to the right to kind of push me back this way. Just a little bit. Now that helps because once you get that down, this finger exercise, because you're not playing a song, you're not playing something that you recognize, you're trying to make it sound musical and all that. It's just an exercise, so all your attention is focused on how you're playing, 
what you're doing with your hand. And that's the great thing about this, is that it takes away everything else except your technique. Same thing over and over. See, so as we go to the right, and then we a little bit, and then we come back. I'm kind of exaggerating that a little bit here, but... Okay? So... See that? You can really see when I go fast. Anyway, but you want to start out slow. Tick, 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 tick. And then the next thing you want to do is have a little accent on the bottom note and the top one. Listen to this. Just a little one. Just a little bit of a hit on the pinky and the thumb. Because we want to have clarity when we're playing. If we have a lot of fast notes, um, you know, there's a little tip here when you have a lot of fast notes. If you'll accent the downbeats, like if you have a group of four sixteenth notes, and you accent that first one of the group just a little bit, especially like Mozart or something with a lot of fast notes, then you'll, your playing will be a lot more clearer that way. Even if you're playing clearly already, if you just have a little accent on those uh, downbeats, um, <clears throat> then it'll uh, make your playing sound a lot clearer, especially when you go fast, see? You can hear the bottoms and the tops of those. Alright, are you bored out of your mind yet? Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, we've just done right hand, okay, and I recommend if these are new to you and you've never done anything like this, do just your right hand first. Tick, 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 tick. What the metronome does is it keeps you from rushing. That's what it does. People say, well, it helps you keep a steady beat and it does all this. Yes, but I think, you know, really get to the point, we all rush if we don't try not to. All right? We all rush if we don't try not to. I really believe that. So the metronome makes us not rush. Okay? speed the ticks up. After you, if you can do it at 84, then, you know, bump it up to 92 and see if you can do it there. And yet, you know, keep a little, you know, log of how fast you're doing them. Uh, and then after you've done the right hand, make sure you can do the left hand alone. Alright, so if you're kind of, if you're more of an advanced pianist and you want to go ahead and put both your hands together, you can do that as long as you can keep your hands together. You don't want to sound like this. Where the hands aren't together, okay, that's bad. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go any faster than you can do it, okay? So now let's look at the left hand here. We have pinky on C. I'm going to check my time. I know that I have 15 minutes now. Oh, ooh, man, we're running out of time. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. C, and we're going to skip. And then F, G, A, G, F, E. Pinky, skip. See that? Just like the right hand was. Let's do both hands together. But you want to go at a speed that you can keep both hands together. Well, I'm, there's a little bit more that I want to show you, but I'll do that on the next lesson on the website. Again, 20 exercises, and you'll get a lot of instruction on those to help you with your fingers. Webpianoteacher.com. Look me up on Facebook or on Twitter, just do a search for Web Piano Teacher. You can find me on there and uh, check out the website. We've got lots of, lots of good stuff on there. And again, one more word on these exercises if you're on the website and you're doing them. Take your time with them. Don't, don't try to you know, bite off too much at one time. Use them as a supplement with the things that you, re that you already do. If you already like playing you know, some songs, you already have some songs you're doing, just you know, throw in a couple of these exercises before you start playing. Uh, you know, every day, just, you know, five or ten minutes of that, and you'll see a remarkable difference in your playing if you've never done anything like this. So, uh, I'll talk to you guys later.